On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1966. We're going to be taking a look at Herman's Hermits, and they're going to be performing No Milk Today. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this is one of those videos that falls under the category of being requested with a reference to whether they were playing or not or whether they faked playing or singing and we're going to be looking at this video from 1966 just to see if they are playing and singing live. So let's get these guys up on screen and see how they get on. No milk today, my lover's gone away The bottle sends for blood, a symbol of the blood No milk today, it seems a common sight But people passing by, don't know the reason why How could they know, just what this message means The end of my hopes, the end of all my dreams How could they know, a palace there had been Behind the door, where my love reigned as queen no milk today, it wasn't always so The company was gay, we turned night into day But all that's left is a place I belong in A terrace house in a new street back of town It comes a shrine when I think of you only Just to end it down No milk today, it wasn't always so The company was gay, we turned night into day as music plays, the faster it we dance We felt it over once, the start of our romance How could they know just what this message means? The end of my hopes, the end of all my dreams How could they know a palace there had been? Behind the door, where my love reigned as queen No milk today, my love has gone away The bottle stands for love, a symbol of the door And there we have it. So with this performance, it is live, of course. I say, of course, I was requested to look at this video because of that being under the spotlight. But this kind of performance, you can't really fake because it's so natural. And especially there are points at which Peter Noon, the vocalist, is half laughing while he's singing and you can't really mind that. So definitely live vocally here with the backing vocals as well. And another thing that gives away when you've got a live performance is when the drummer is going for it on the hi-hat, you can see Barry just really going for it. Generally with TV performances, if bands are miming, the drummer will typically not even hit the hi-hat because it's such a harsh sound. For those of you who do play the guitar at home and you've heard the original intro on the recording to No Milk Today, you'll know that it was played on a classical guitar with nylon strings, which sound totally different to steel strings. So if they were trying to mime here, the intro, which is clearly the sound of nylon strings on a steel strung guitar, it would just look weird because it wouldn't sound 
the same as the guitar that he's playing. So it's one of those things. Derek is playing the intro here. The other thing that I just want to draw your attention to, Keith Hopwood in the background here, on this still shot, you can see he's turning down the volume on his guitar. And this is something that if you do play, you'll know that as soon as you're playing at volume and the song has finished, you just kill the volume on your guitar to just avoid any unwanted feedback that might go over the top of the vocalist saying thank you to the crowd or anything like that, just to get a nice tight ending to the song. There'd be no need to do that if you were miming because you wouldn't be worried about feedback coming through the amp because you're not actually playing and the amp isn't turned on. So it's another giveaway as well as the drums, like I said, going for it on the hi-hat. Another thing to mention is the guitar sound because it's really low in the mix here and for the most part, they're both gonna be playing the same chords, the same rhythm, which is probably for the best because guitar players out there would have noticed at about one minute and 42 seconds, we we have the little rundown and it's always the way that the camera will focus on a guitarist when they make a mistake and I always say in other videos when you are playing live everybody makes mistakes but it's how you hide it and how you continue on with the performance that means nobody will spot it and I guarantee you that nobody would have noticed it mentally when you do something wrong and you're playing live sometimes you have a mistake and that throws in another thought process that you're not used to. So it means that you're now not thinking about your next chord, you're thinking about the mess up that you just did. So then the next chord gets messed up and then the next chord and then you have to wait until the end of the section to get back on into the song where you are now back on track. Just to put the spotlight on the vocals of this performance as well, because the backing vocals aren't really up front, but you can hear that they're on pitch and they're doing the job. And Peter's lead vocal is so impressive, considering as well that he's only 19 years of age in this performance. And when it all started, he was 15 and 16 years of age. And interestingly, he was a child actor on Coronation Street, which is a big soap that we have in this country. So he was already well known, but then singing live in front of people at that age, 15, 16, when you're just finishing school and then getting up on stage, performing in front of so many people, having such a good voice as well. And this is all part of the training that he did for acting and theater and getting into that side of things. Interestingly, the same thing that I mentioned on the video that I did on the monkeys about being actors, but they could all sing. They'd all been training because that was all part of the job of being an actor and getting out on stage and potentially being part of musicals. So, Peter had that ability, but at a young age, is performing in front of people with the band in 1963. The thing that's so impressive about this performance vocally from Peter is that he's hitting these notes right between the eyes and the melody is very complex because it jumps all over the place, which I will demonstrate in a second with the guitar playing through the melody of that vocal, but also showing the change from minor key to major key. It is really what makes this song so different and give you that change in mood between the verse and the chorus. The other thing that this song has with the phrasing of that vocal, the lines end very sharply, and more often than not, there'll be an ending to a vocal phrase that is a note that you weren't holding previously. But when you've got one note that is being hit, just as a one-off note without being held, the accuracy of it has to be spot on. And it's the hardest thing to do to just jump to a note really quickly. And especially if that note isn't close to the range in which you've already been singing and then nail that dead on pitch and get back into the next vocal phrase. It's something that Peter nails throughout this performance. I've got the guitar out just to show you the range that Peter's covering with his voice. Also the change from major to minor key that we have in this song and also maybe playing through the melody and maybe showing you the little rundown that's incorrect in this performance. So Peter's starting on an A4 in the verse and that seventh fret of your D string if you've got your guitar out and we've got this melody. And already it means that we've covered an octave 
And the way that Peter just makes it look so easy, and also when he gets down to that A3, which is the octave below, he gets that rich tone to his voice as well and makes his whole range sound consistent. And that's what it's all about when you're listening to a great vocalist. It doesn't sound like they've got a weak part of their range. And especially here, sometimes when you go down lower in your range, you can start to find that it becomes a bit airy or has a slightly different tone to it. But a great tone here from Peter all the way down. So in the first verse, as soon as we start, you've got to go down an octave, but Peter makes it seem so easy. So the thing to point out about this song is that the key to it is the key, the change from A minor to A major. And in the melody of the verse that we're just talking about, it's this minor scale melody, which sounds like that. And if we just change one note, which is exactly what happens with the melody in the song to the major key, we're now sounding happy compared to the minor. So that's all that's happening. It's just changing from a sadder place of that minor key to the happier place of the major key. So if I play through the progression, even if you don't play the guitar, you might be able to hear where there's an obvious lift in the sound. It goes to a happier place. So starting off in the verse. And there right at the end is where it's going to be most obvious, changing from the A the A into the A minor because you get that instant comparison and contrast of the emotion and the sound of the chords that you're playing and just the way that it feels. Like I said, it's just typical that the rundown, when he doesn't quite play it right, the camera is literally zoomed in on the fretboard. So the first chord that he plays is the A major, which is fine and everything's going well at this point. But then as we start to descend, he messes up the next chord change. And because of that, it throws in that thought process of now panicking and not knowing what the next chord is. So from this A, we're then gonna change down. I'll play the video so we can just see and then I'll pause it so we get to see the chord shape that he goes to. So here, this is where he's played the A, he's moved down to, that's the shape. It's a bit of a pain anyway to get to that. And the thumb, as you'll see on my guitar, is slightly lower and the most important thing is that the thumb, if I just move it out of the way, you can see that I'm below that fret because he knows he's not quite fretting it correctly. So he's missing the strings on purpose. This is where he's hiding the mistakes so that the overall sound doesn't get affected by what he's playing. Let's get to the next chord. And now this should be into a minor chord. This is an F sharp minor that's being played. And again, the killer here is look at his thumb and look at my thumb. It's on the same fret that my first finger is. And this is all happening within a second or two seconds. So because I'm slowing it down, obviously it exaggerates it, but he hit it so well anyway. But if I was to strum exactly what is being played here, and I'm not pointing this out to say, oh, he played the wrong chords and he's rubbish and he doesn't know what he's doing. I'm doing this for guitar players out there who are watching people that are playing up on stage and they have thousands of people watching them and they idolize guitarists and think that they never make mistakes, but everybody makes mistakes. This is a great example of how changing to a wrong chord 
can be covered up just by missing the strings and everybody knows when they haven't got their chord position quite right or they've forgotten what the next chord is, it's better just to try and keep control of everything and accept that mistakes happen, but then just gather your thoughts and try and get back into the progression wherever you can. Just to briefly cover a bit of the history because these guys started up actually in separate bands, two local bands in Manchester, and then they made this band. And like I said before, it was when Peter was only 15, 16 years of age. So he's very young, but they did get to meet Mickey Most, who was a producer at the time. And they worked out a deal with him. And finally, through that, they signed to Columbia Records here in the UK and that was MGM Records over in the USA. These guys were competent musicians, they could all play their instruments but because of the industry at the time the default was to get in session musicians to record the backing for so many artists and bands who could play their instruments and I think that's where the confusion comes in with Herman's Hermits because people did play on their recordings and in the studio but these guys did play themselves and it was especially something that Mickey was known for doing for getting in session guys to play for bands that he was involved with so they hit the ground running with their first single release in 1964 and that was I'm Into Something Good which was a monster hit over in the USA and also in the UK it got to the number one spot here Fast forwarding to 1965, they released Mrs. Brown, You've Got a Lovely Daughter, and that was a massive hit in the USA, it got to number one in the charts there, and was nominated for two Grammys in 1965. This track, No Milk Today, was a huge hit here in the UK, it got into the top 10 of our charts, but interestingly, over in the USA, it didn't do as well, and the younger generation might not realise that when you released a single back in the 60s, it had two sides to it and the sides differed depending on whether you were in the UK or in the USA. So in the UK No Milk Today was the big hit on that single and there was the other side of it which was My Reservations Been Confirmed but over in the USA it was paired with There's a Kind of Hush and that turned into a big hit over in the USA. It got to number four in the charts. Unfortunately I'm not gonna have time to get into all of the details and this video has probably gone on for ages already anyway but just to mention that in 1968 there was a movie called Mrs. Brown You've Got a Lovely Daughter and these guys played on the soundtrack of course with the song of the same name unfortunately Peter left the band in 1971 they did reform very briefly after that but the personnel did change so it's great to have a look back at these guys in full flow in 1966 and just to clarify that yes they are singing and they are playing and it's great to have a look at somebody such as Peter at the front of the stage being so young but also being so comfortable and really selling the performance because it's so easy to watch and his vocal is so easy to listen to as well Thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one.